the World Championship match between Vichy Anand and Boris Galvant has come to an end. The reigning world champion defeated the challenger 2.5 1.5 in the rapid tiebreak, and so Anand retained his title yet again. The first game, where Galvant started with the white pieces, was immediately a very sharp fight which ended in a draw. The second game eventually turned out to be decisive for the whole match. In yet another Rosalimo Sicilian, Anand won a pawn but Galvant got excellent compensation. Eventually Anand managed to consolidate and reach a winning rook ending. In the third game Galvant came very close to level the score. He really had Anand on the ropes, but with two pawns up in a rook ending he had to be satisfied with a draw. This meant that the challenger had to win with black in game 4. Not an easy task against the world champ, but he did get an advantage. However, a risky king march eventually led to a rook ending that was completely drawn, and Galfand again had to stop his winning attempts. He shook Anand's hand and congratulated him with the overall victory. It was uh, incredibly tense. And, um, well, when I woke up this morning, you had this feeling that one way or the other, uh, we were, I mean, it was really coming to an end today. But, okay, you simply don't know how it's going to go. I mean, the match was so even that I had uh, no sense of uh, what shape the tiebreak would take. I think right now, probably the only feeling you have is a relief. I think I'm even too tense to be happy, but I'm really relieved. I would say simply that uh, my nerves held out better. Even these four games, there's so much back and forth going on. Well, I simply hung on for dear life. Um, I won't claim more than that. Obviously game one was an incredibly tense start because um, I had no idea if we were playing correctly or not. As it turns out we played reasonably but uh, the second game I think I was better during most of the game but um, of course Boris uh, defended uh, extremely well and uh, the result should be a draw but it was short of time and actually the position is unpleasant with my pawn on b5. Um, because with the knight on c5 and a rook floating on the 7th, uh, things can happen. And that's exactly what happened. I managed to get a 4 kill. That was a very nice uh, gift, of course. The third game, I was just lost, of course. Um, but I was lucky that I was lost in a way that I still have some counterplay. So I have this big pawn mass in the center, and g5, and rook g7, and you know. Um, it makes it a bit difficult uh, for white, I think, but still, normally speaking, uh, my score in the match, I mean, the score of the match will be equalized right away. And the fourth game, I mean, I, I didn't really want to, I know that you're not supposed to uh, play too, too hard for a draw, because normally this goes very badly, but somehow at the board, I, I just started to do exactly that. And, um, Let's just say I'm, I'm, I was pretty happy when uh, my rooks were doubled and I got these rook e6 tricks because then I think it's actually complicated for him to answer. But it was just uh, very back and forth and I think he had uh, lots of chances in games 3 and 4. In principle, the match was a non-rovnay battle, I think, with my advantage. In the second part, I think, he played well and had more более чем достаточно компенсацию за пешку, но и как во всех партиях решающим фактором стало, наверное, какое-то такое не очень практичное использование времени, потому что когда отстаешь по времени, трудно делать все сильнейшие ходы и грубейшие ошибки и во второй и в третьей партии определили исход матча. Но в четвертом был перевес, но опять-таки the problem in such a tight match is uh, every mistake has a much higher value than in a match where there are mistakes flowing back and forth in every game. In a match where there, there were so few chances, for me it was a really incredibly heavy blow to lose game 7. And um, if I had to pick a moment when I really um, really proud of it, it's my reaction in the 8th game. I understand it was not Boris's best game, but still, um, I mean, I cannot remember such a black day like uh, after uh, game 7. I couldn't sleep, I mean, 
that day I really thought I'd blown the match. Uh, because the tendency was also uh, getting tough. I mean, I was still going to give it my best shot, but uh, I think game eight was just very, very important for my morale. I count myself extremely fortunate that I was able to come back the next day. Um, for me, I would even say this was the critical moment in, my, in the match from my perspective because uh, I was not getting a lot of chances and that's exactly the situation where you don't want to be behind. So, uh, after that, well, we continued trying till the end. Uh, I know some of you thought we were already he heading for the tie break, but it wasn't like that. But the thing is, uh, we're not heading for it, but I'm not going to do something insane just to avoid it because then you might not even get there. Given that we drew our first 12 games, deciding it by a tie break is quite a reasonable situation. Uh, obviously, I'm not suggesting we start with it, but after such a long and tough match, uh, maybe it's the only thing that could separate us. And um, well, even the tie break, of course, it was just incredibly intense. I imagine uh, my opponent as well. And uh, well, things really went my way, and that's all you can say. Uh, I think I can say that I won because I won, and that's it. You know, I have big experience, so I try, as I told many times, I was not kidding. I tried to play, uh, after game is over, I tried to focus on the new game and not to assess my chances. It's a long match, and uh, uh, you have to play each game and uh, be focused permanently. So I never was... Uh, after one of the games, I was thinking about what are the chances. I was uh, very focused on preparation for the next game. It'll take some time even for today to sink in, and then, um, well, like I said, I, I'm mainly relieved. I'm really relieved because I understood that, um, in all fairness, this match simply could have gone either way. And uh, I noticed, it. I noticed it already starting 2009. Um, I mean, at that point, I didn't know that Boris was going to win Kazan, of course, but in Hanti Mansisk, I saw uh, his enormous determination and uh, his strength. I mean, the test he survived there, qualify, and then again in Kazan. So, uh, I think he showed that for uh, what he was really motivated for. Um, so, personally, I, I, I never felt like a favorite. I knew I would have my chances, but uh, I never really felt like a favorite because, well, I know Boris much too long for that. And, uh, yeah, right now, uh, I'm just relieved. I can't think beyond that.